All right, before we get started, I wanna make sure that I have all of my supplies ready and out. And when you're applying crepe hair, it's really important to make sure that you're using your hand towel and putting it down over your workspace before you start cutting the hair because it's really difficult to sweep all of those little hairs up when you're done at the end of the day. It's very easy to pick up the towel and shake it out uh, over the trash can or outside. So I'm gonna lay my, thank you Franklin. I'm gonna lay, thank you. I'm gonna lay my towel down over my workspace and go ahead and get out all of my supplies. Now I'm gonna need my strand of crepe hair, a pair of small scissors or large scissors. If you're doing a larger beard look, you might wanna get a little more bang for your buck with a longer scissor. Spear gum, which comes in your kit. It's the little, it says spear gum on the front of it. Liquid latex. My brown eyebrow pencil. Uh, a pair of tweezers, just in case. A couple of Q-tips, just in case. Um, and then a comb. You can either use the comb that's on the back of your eyebrow brush, or if you were like me and you bought this little pair of scissors at Walmart, it came with a tiny comb, a tiny mustache comb, in your choice of colors. So make sure you have all of those supplies out along with your spirit gum remover and some sort of cotton wipe or a Swiss burr or something that you can remove the spirit gum and the hair with afterwards. All right, so before we start cutting and applying the crepe hair to our face, you need to decide, are you doing a curly beard? Are you doing a straight beard? Or are you doing maybe a kind of curly beard? If you look at your crepe hair, open the bag, take it out, you'll see that either end uh, of the hair is wrapped around two pieces of twine that run inside the hair. And if you pull that hair, it will naturally unravel itself around those two pieces of twine. Now, if you leave it in this state, you can see just kind of separating the hair loosely with my fingertips, um, it's curly. If you apply the hair directly from the strand without straightening it first, you'll have a curly beard. So if that's the character effect you're going for, then by all means, uh, start this way. But if you are trying to get a more natural or, or straight beard or you're doing a mustache or sideburns or what have you, you're gonna to need to straighten the hair ahead of time. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and section off a bit of hair, as much as I think I'm gonna need, plus maybe a, a little bit more, maybe an inch more. Um, and I'm just gonna do a sideburn to demonstrate for you how to apply the hair. So I'm gonna take about that much. You see once you, once you pull it out, it this is actually quite a lot of hair. Um, I'm gonna straighten about that much of the hair. All right, so to straighten the hair, I've walked out into the green room. There should be an ironing table set up along with a piece of muslin or just a bit of scrap uh, cotton cloth uh, to protect the hair from the heat of the iron. I have my iron plugged in and it's on a low to medium heat setting, if you can see that there. I'm gonna take the hair covering it with my muslin to protect it. Straighten out the hair and gently apply heat, pulling the hair straight and flattening it with the heat of the iron. So I'm just gonna keep my iron moving. And you can see already the crimp is starting to leave the hair. Using my eyebrow pencil, my brown eyebrow pencil, I'm going to lightly outline for myself where I'm applying the crepe hair to my face. And giving myself a boundary line. Now it's a good idea if you're doing sideburns or if you're doing a mustache or eyebrows or whatever, um, once you mark out on one side, 
your boundary lines, go ahead and mark it out on the other side before you apply the hair because once you apply the hair over it, it's really difficult to see sort of where you ended your line or uh, how far it goes on the face. So it's easier to make the marking symmetrical if you do it before you apply the hair. So just lightly dotting my mutton chop onto my face. Right. So using your fingertips and splaying out the ends of the hair, go ahead and measure how much hair you need to cut off. And it looks like I need just about an inch to do facial hair. A little goes a long way when it comes to uh, hair length. You want enough that you can hold it and apply it, um, but understand that you're still gonna trim away and shape the, uh, the hair once it's on your face. All right, so about an inch, just about like that. Next, I'm going to apply my spirit gum onto my face. Now, if you are creating a hair appliance, something that you can use over and over again, um, you might not want to directly use the spirit gum on your face. You can use your liquid latex and with multiple layers, three or four layers of the latex, letting it dry in between, you can paint the shape of the boundary that you've given yourself because you're creating a second layer of uh, skin, basically, that you're going to glue the hair to. Um, I recommend smell this uh, before you apply it to your face if you have a weak stomach or the smell of the liquid latex bothers you I recommend not using this this technique for a mustache um, because it it lives right under your nose and you'll have to smell it the entire time it's drying and with three or four layers that's a lot of time so you have the option to use the liquid latex um, but the application method is going to be the same with using the spirit gum you're going to start at the bottom of the shape and work your way up. That way it looks like the hair is growing naturally. If I covered the entire space with spear gum and then laid the hair top to bottom, you can imagine I would just be pushing the hair flat to the face instead of letting it hang off of the face and look like it's actually growing. So it takes spear gum anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds to set up and be tacky on the face. And you really don't want to start applying the hair to the spirit gum until it's had time to get sticky. So I've applied the spirit gum in about a half to a three quarter inch um, width amount on my face, not covering the entire shape. I'm then going to take my cut edge. This is the edge of the of the crepe hair that I cut. I'm going to take my cut edge and using my small scissors, I'm going to if it's tacky yet not quite I'm gonna lay the hair starting at the base of my shape right because I don't want the hair to end necessarily um, so that the hair is applied here to the bottom of the shape I want it to look like it's growing out of the face so my guideline really serves as where I'm applying the the top of the hair the top of the hair's length so it's starting to get tacky, and as it does, I'm going to lay in that cut edge of hair. And you can use the back end of your eyebrow brush to press the hair into the face as well if you don't have your small scissors. Just something nice and flat and hard that you can press against the skin to fuse the hair. I'm going to lay the hair in on the tips, and then I'm going to pull away any hair that isn't caught in the spirit gum. That looks lovely. Make sure you are 
laying the hair down in the shape that the hair would grow naturally. So if you're creating a mustache, for instance, you want to take care that you're not placing the hair so that when it goes into the spirit gum, it's laying in an awkward way. And just go in layer by layer. and lay that hair in. When you're removing the crepe hair, it's important to make sure you're using your spirit gum remover. Spirit gum is an adhesive, and if you try to remove that adhesive with just a simple face wash, uh, it's probably not going to get the spirit gum off of your skin, and then pulling the hair off um, is going to be painful because you're going to be pulling glue off of your face, basically. So take your spirit gum remover and a cotton ball or a Swiss fur, a cotton pad or a, a tissue, but I recommend something soft because you're putting it on your face and the paper towels in the bathroom tend to be pretty harsh. So I'm just going to soak my cotton ball in the spirit gum remover and then starting at the top, I'm just going to smooth down. I'm just smoothing down the face and removing the crepe hair and the spirit gum from my skin. Smells as good coming off as it did going on. Ugh. So once I removed most of the hair, I'm just going to go back and clean up the residual spirit gum with the spirit gum remover. And then make sure, make sure that you wash your face thoroughly after you apply the sphere gum remover because it is an oil-based product and it's going to kind of leave a film on the top of your skin.